part of my genetic inheritance is chronic, hopeless clumsiness. But my mom was determined that I would get past this family curse and I would stop tripping over the flowers and the rug, as she liked to say. So when I turned six, she enrolled me in classes at Joy's Dance Studio. I was the kind of girl who would fall and skin my knees running through the woods, but I liked the idea of learning to dance. I thought maybe it would make me graceful, like Belle when she dances with Beast in the library. Maybe I would have adventures and marry a prince like she did. In our town of 2,000 people in rural Ohio, where the big debate was whether the cornfield across from my elementary school would be converted into our first McDonald's, most older women I knew looked worn down by life, wearing frumpy clothes and dull, broken hair. And in contrast, the dance teacher, Joy, she seemed to me like the picture of elegance. Her silver hair was permed and piled on top of her head, somehow making her look more like a queen than an old lady. And she always wore black. She had converted the basement of her home into a dance studio, with mirrors and ballet bars lining the walls, and next to it was a waiting room where parents would sit during class. I thought that going into that basement studio every week would transform me into a classy woman like her. Joy's dance studio mostly drew in other country bumpkins like me, kids who could be found on weekends trapping crawdads in the creek. And then there were the Wee Wee Twins. <laughs> Their names were Abigail and Alexandra Wee Wee, and they weren't really twins, just sisters who were so close in age that it was easier to think of them as twins. And they wore matching ponytails and a sense of entitlement that can only come from having rich parents who don't love you. <laughs> they walked into the studio in new leotards and tights with outruns in them and gave a disdainful once over to my hand-me-down clothes and scuffed shoes. And I knew immediately by the way they looked at me up and down that they thought they were better than me. Their mom, Mrs. Wee Wee, was like a blonde Cruella de Vil who sat in on all the rehearsals and judged all these little girls doing dance routines. Dance starts off pretty silly. You know, you're in a sailor costume doing a tap routine to the good ship lollipop. And then when you get older, you get to wear sequins and pretend you're Baby Spice in a routine to wannabe. Let me buddy down and zig zig ah. I loved wearing the costumes and learning to move my body in new ways. I wasn't by any means a good dancer, but I tried really hard. And every year, I took home the trophy for the Smile Award, for always showing my enthusiasm with a big toothy grin. But having fun wasn't enough for Mrs. Wee Wee. Only perfection made the grade for her. As a kid, I had a two inch red birthmark on my forehead. My mom tried hard not to make a big deal of it, but she just called it my feather, with love. And she encouraged me to wear bangs to cover it up. If not for those bangs, I wouldn't have had the courage to show my face in public because of the monstrosity between my eyebrows. And Mrs. Wee Wee once took Joy, the dance teacher, aside to say, it's not right that Jana wears bangs and no one else does. She should really pin them back with a barrette. She's messing up the look of the group. Look at me, ruining Mrs. Wee Wee's idea of what makes a perfect children's dance group. <laughs> After several years together in dance class, we were doing this slick new tap routine to Walking on Sunshine. Joy put us in pairs by height and said, Jana, you'll be with Alex Wee Wee. Alex looked me up and down and pursed her lips. Joy explained this complicated and flashy new move where we would slide our partners between our legs so they could jump up in a big reveal. And I would be sliding Alex through my legs and picking her up off the floor. Alex rolled her eyes and barely spoke to me as we danced together. But she was so worldly with her expensive clothes and her perfect ponytail, and I wanted to impress her. I was determined to get the move right, and I did, at least a dozen times. Every time I did the move right was like a small vindication. I felt so good about my skills that I eventually let my body go on autopilot during classes. Then one day, while I was pulling Alex across the floor, 
I felt my tap shoe sliding a little out of control on the smooth floor, and then my foot skidded out from un underneath me and in slow motion with nothing I could do to stop it. I fell and landed right on top of Alex Wee Wee. As far as I could tell, she wasn't hurt, but she would not stop crying. I'm so sorry, I said. Are you okay? She wouldn't respond or look at me in the eye. All the other girls crowded around to comfort her, but she just cried harder. Mrs. Wee Wee stormed up to Joy and took her to the back room while I was stuck in front of the mirrors looking at myself in my stupid birthmark, pulsing angrily between my sweaty bangs. I couldn't hear what was said, but I heard their voices raised. And in my insecurity, I was certain Mrs. Wee Wee was yelling something like, how dare you pair my daughter up with that clumsy hick? She could have broken Alexandra's beautiful face. Alexandra has a bright future ahead of her, and that girl is going nowhere. When Joy came back from being reamed out, she sighed and announced to the class, OK, we're changing the routine. Oh, man. Everyone groaned. That was the most fun part of the song. I was so ashamed to have ruined the dance for everyone. We practiced walking on sunshine without the fancy move, and it just didn't have the same luster. I walked around, averting my eyes from my fellow dancers, and especially Alex Wee Wee, who continued to pretend I didn't exist. After a few weeks, noticing the routine was still missing something, Joy announced another change. OK, girls, we're putting the sliding move back in, but Jenna, you'll be with Lauren instead of Alex. Lauren wore hand-me-downs like me and didn't have a rich mom around to prevent her from getting paired with the class klutz. At her year-end recital, I slid Lauren beneath me and she jumped up without a hitch. Walking on Sunshine was a big success and re received thunderous applause. But getting the move right with Lauren as my dance party partner felt like a hollow victory. I couldn't forget the moment my body had failed me and attracted the wrath of the wee-wees. I was determined to regain my dignity the next year, but instead, our family moved to Florida and I was taken out of dance class. In Florida, I was too embarrassed by the ghost of my past failure to start dancing in a group of new kids. I never got to avenge myself, but the Wee Wee Twins stayed with me, giving voice to my inner demons of insecurity. Years later, I would still hear Al Abigail, Alexandra, and Mrs. Wee Wee inside my head saying, you're too clumsy. You try too hard. You will never be elegant. And now, even though I've lived in big cities and my birthmark has faded, I still feel like that country girl on the inside. Recently, I called my mom, and we reminisced about the Wee Wee Twins. Boy, their mom was mean, she said, and we laughed. With the distance of many years, I can recognize that it couldn't have been much fun for them in dance class. They had to have everything be perfect because their mom was watching. At the time, I didn't have that perspective. Their perfectionism just made me feel insecure. But then my mom told me, you know, you were always Joy's favorite student. And suddenly, I could see my child self in a whole new light not as a hick who dragged my dance troupe down with her clumsiness, but as an enthusiastic spirit who could bring a smile to a teacher. And you know, maybe that's enough. Maybe some people can appreciate me for trying hard, even if I'm not cool. As an adult, one of my favorite activities is dancing at weddings and making up my own moves, no matter how silly. Even if I'm still clumsy, I still have the spirit to dance through life with resilience. Thank you.